Hi everybody, um, I'm Linda Ravenscroft. This is a quick video about making the lampshade. I hope you can follow it. Um, this is your basic kit. I'm not going to talk too much over it because uh, some of it's pretty self-explanatory and there's full instructions in the kit. So I'm just gathering some bits together here so that you've got them ready to make your lampshade. Now when you're piece of uh, vinyl arrives it will be rolled up what I suggest you do is actually re-roll it in the opposite direction just to try and get it as flat as you possibly can the flatter you can get it the easier it is to work with unfortunately it has to be rolled up in the kit to make uh, to make it fit so you'll have your beautiful piece of fabric which was designed by me and um, made just for us there is no more of this fabric in the world and uh, i think it just looks beautiful when it's lit now the piece you'll get in the kit is a little bit bigger than the piece i have here so you'll have find it a lot easier to make the lampshade so all i'm going to do here is just trim off one end as close to the pattern as i can getting rid of all the white what you want is a nice straight edge just showing the um, the design um, the idea being that when you lie it down you know exactly where your pattern starts and it will allow you to have a nice neat edge there's no need to worry too much about this as long as you keep your piece of vinyl as close to the edge as you can so you'll see what I do in a minute there we go laid it out the nice cut edge is over there to the right hand to the left hand side as you're looking at this and I'm going to show you how to peel the backing off the vinyl what I normally do is just peel it back a little bit first you'll see that in a second so I've got it lined up with the fabric just to get an idea of how it's going to look there we go and I'm just going to fold back the um, sticky back film so that you're not going to get it all stuck to the piece of fabric so then you can just line up your fabric so that you've got it fairly square at the edge don't worry too much about it but as, as neat towards the edge as you can get press it down so it's nicely stuck just that first inch ready to go and make sure it's all lined up then you can slowly start peeling back the backing paper which is underneath the vinyl you'll see me start to do it here and if you do it in little bits if you do make any mistakes it's much easier to lift off again and place it back down so do it nice and gently quite patiently that's it you just keep pressing it down as you're peeling the backing paper off I found this to be the easiest way to do it. There we go. Nice and neat. And just smoothing it out as you go. The fabric is beautiful fabric and it doesn't crinkle very easily. So that should be stuck to the vinyl. So just get rid of my rubbish turn it over and then you can smooth out any crinkles that you have pressing it nice and firmly nice and smoothly and then the trick is now to cut off all the excess fabric from right round the edges any excess that you have you can use a knife with this if you wish but I actually like to use a pair of good sharp fabric scissors so just trim it all neatly to the edge as best you can. It's probably a bit of a boring bit. You can fast forward this if you want to. But as you can see, you just trim all the excess fabric off just from around the edge of the template.
as I said the fabric's great fabric to work with it doesn't fray so you shouldn't end up with any horrible frayed edges on this the finished result should be really nice and smooth so I'm even taking a tiny bit off the very edge that I'd cut originally just to make everything nice and neat As I said, the instructions in the kit are pretty good as well. So I just thought this might be a handy little guide for you all to follow if you want to just see how, how I do it. There you go, so I'm just showing you that even though I trimmed that edge, there's just tiny bits that I could cut off, so I'm just going to finish it off so it's nice and neat. That's it, so all the edges are now trimmed. Now when you look at your vinyl, you will also notice that there are um, pieces that need to be removed it does show you on the instructions all you have to do is fold back the pieces right the way down and as you do so it will release them slightly and this allows you to rip the piece off which will leave you with a fabric edge so you just take this it's only about a centimeter on each side and this will be the part that you will wrap around your uh, frame for your lamp. So that's it. Just crease it right the way down and then pull off the piece. So that will give you two pieces on each edge of just fabric and then you decide which way round you'd like to tape your piece so I'm going to put a piece of double-sided tape which is in the kit that's the way I've decided to fold the piece over so a piece of double-sided tape will just go on the end of the vinyl you don't stick it to the fabric you just stick it to the vinyl on the very edge and that will be the piece that will stick to join the lampshade together that's stuck there and the fabric is still quite clear there's no tape on it and that will make our circle so the next job is to put the double-sided tape round the frames themselves so if you line the tape up on your circle sadly you can't actually see me doing it on here but I do get a little bit clearer I think later just put a bit of tape on your loop Try and centralise it if you can. So the red there is the tape. Sorry, it's not a, a bit clearer. And you just try and centralise it. And then when you've gone completely round the loop, cut it off and then just gently press around the edges to wrap the tape around the loop itself. It doesn't take too long to do. There we go, I'm just firmly pressing the tape down so that it slightly wraps around. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just helps it to adhere to the loop. I'm calling it a loop, it's probably a ring, but I think hopefully you understand what I mean. So there we go. So we've left the cover of the backing on, so that's just wrapped around the first one. So now I'm going there to go and I've repeated it on piece. the second one. 
And hopefully so now I'm going to show you the next I've changed step. the angle here. So, so again, I'm going to, I'm going to just put the tape on. Sorry, apologies. Right the way around the loop. So you just start it there. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Start it, roll it round, taping as centre as you can, right the way around the loop. There we go, keep going until you meet the other end. And then trim it off. So that's double-sided tape on both loops. You'll watch me just press it around again a little bit. There we go, it's a better picture. And I'm just gently pressing it around the loop itself so that it's sticking right round. There, we've got both pieces now have tape on them, ready to make the shade. So I find the easiest way to roll my shade is to put the taped edge at the bottom as I start to roll from the top. So that's going to be the last piece on the shade. So I start with the, that's it, the fabric there and the actual tape pieces is at the bottom. I always take the tape off this piece first because it's easier to put it down on the table if you're working on your own. Put it down on the table after you've removed the sticky tape because it's extremely sticky once you've removed the backing of the tape. So you can just sit it there ready to pick up when you need it. Now this loop is the one that you will use first because it's very sticky and you can't put it down on the table because it will stick to the table. So I always use this one first to start my shades off. So I'm just going to peel off the backing right the way around. And this piece will go in place first. Now with this fabric you don't have an up or a down so it doesn't matter which way around you lay your pieces it will be suitable for a, la a lamp base or a shade for a ceiling or a lamp now make sure that the lamp holder section faces inwards and not outwards or else you'll find out it will ruin your lamp shade and you'll see it so this is the tricky bit but once you line it up you're only going to stick the loops to the vinyl not to the fabric as close to the edge of the vinyl as you can once you've got it stuck down first of all you can find that you can slowly roll it keeping your eyes that the loops are stuck just to the vinyl keep rolling it up until you finally get to the very last bit where your tape is there we go and you've made a complete circle and it should just be stuck to the loops, making sure that you haven't gone over the edge of the vinyl too much. There we go. I don't know if you can see that it's just stuck neatly to the vinyl. That allows you to fold the fabric edges over to make the lamp. So the next job is to remove the double sided tape from the end and then join that together. Now you can use a roller if you like, or I just press it nice and firmly. I don't know if you can see me pressing the seam there. Press it nice and firmly to make sure it's glued together with the tape. There we go. That leaves you nice fabric edges then to fold over. Now the important thing is, you want to make sure that they fold over nice and neatly. So I always trim out the little pieces where the seam is. Now make sure you only trim the pieces 
from the underside and not from the top so that you can fold the top piece over. So hopefully you can see where I'm trying to do it. Just cut that tiny piece out. That will allow you then to fold over that piece without a big lump of fabric being in the way. Also, I like to do a little snip on each of the three spindles. Again, to allow you to fold the fabric either side of the spindles. There we go. So that will allow you to be able to press them down. So as you fold your fabric over, you'll feel it start to stick to the tape underneath. So I just usually fold it over lightly and then sit it down. And then I just trim the top piece of fabric where the seam is as well. The same technique just from the inside to make sure I can fold over the fabric nice and neatly without any bulky fabric being in the way. That will allow you to fold it all over. As you can see, I'm just gently folding the edges over so that the fabric starts to stick to the tape. So straight away you can get an idea of what you need to do next. The next trick is to actually fold the fabric underneath the loop underneath the metal loop itself. Now the little piece of plastic that comes with the kits are already supplied with the kits when I um, have them delivered to me. They're not the best that you can do it. You have to do it nice and slowly and basically what you're trying to do is just tuck the edge of the fabric as neatly as you can down behind the metal loops. Now I've tried different methods of doing this one. If you do struggle using the piece of plastic that comes with the kit, I have found that the back of a teaspoon is equally just as good. So I think I show you in this demo that I've used the back of a teaspoon as well. So whichever you find the easiest to do, have a go. And literally just gently tuck the fabric neatly in to finish off the lampshade. Again, this is probably quite a boring bit, so if you want to fast forward, please do. Um, and you will see me use a, um, a metal teaspoon shortly, which I personally think worked a little bit better, but everybody to their own. And then once you've done this right the way around on both sides, you should have a beautiful finished lampshade. As I said, this fabric is absolutely gorgeous. It's a lovely brushed velvet feel. And when it's lit, it's just so warm and cosy. Now, all I'm doing there is just going round and making sure that it's tucking under. It's nice to use your fingers. You can feel um, where the fabric needs to be. So I often use my fingers just to make sure they're neatly, neatly folded. But the fabric itself that I've used will not fray, so you won't end up with horrible pieces of strands showing. Now here I am just having a go with the teaspoon, the back of the teaspoon. And it seems to work really quite well. Sorry, it's a bit difficult to actually film and show you at the same time, but I'm hoping you get the gist. As I said, the instructions are quite, um, quite easy to follow. So all I'm doing is, it looks like I'm pushing, but I'm just literally pushing the fabric underneath, in between the PVC plastic, the vinyl and the metal ring. Not very good at doing these voiceovers, so I do hope this makes sense to you. 
So I make these lampshades myself all the time in the gallery, although this particular fabric is brand new and completely exclusive. So um, I'm quite excited about this fabric. It's just stunning. The colours in it are just so cosy when it's lit. So I hope you agree. It's called Dragonfly Sunset and it's part of my vanishing series, which is all about conservation of our animals and creatures and flowers, insects. It's so, one of my favourites. I just love the uh, colours in this piece. One of those represents so, Seems like a bit of a struggle. This is probably the most difficult part of creating the lampshade. Um, but once you've got it all tucked in around the edge so that you're happy with it and that it's nice and neat, your lampshade is basically completed. Oh, and I've just used the back of the spoon there actually to go down the seam. Um, I know I pressed it with my fingers, but the back of a spoon is just as good to, um, to use it just to make sure it's nice and firmly fastened. Um, the tape is very sticky, so it sticks really quite well. There you go. I think you can see a little bit better here where I'm actually pressing the fabric into that, uh, that rim. There we go. Yes, I'm just pressing it in and making sure it's just tucked down on the inside of the metal ring. So just explaining that you can do it both ways, either with the plastic strip that comes with the kit. Or I just find that the spoon's perhaps a little bit firmer and easier to do. So I'm just going to carry on round until we've completed this. I'm sorry this is out of picture, but this is because it's just easier to do it um, this way around without showing it to the camera. So I don't want you to be too bored and uh, wait for me to finish all this off. There you go, as you can see, I'm just pushing it in. I'll think of just trying a different piece of plastic there just to see what, what sort of pieces work better. I think I found that the teaspoon's definitely one of the best options. There we go. I think we're nearly finished. Yes, that's the teaspoon again. Just push it in along as you go until it looks neat and tidy. I have been using this technique for quite some time now and the finished result is really good. So I hope you enjoy making these. We do different sizes as well in the, in the gallery, so bigger ones and um, very tiny ones. This is the most popular size though because it's the more practical size for most people's homes if they have it uh, on a, a table lamp or on the ceiling. It seems to be just about the perfect size. It's 30 centimetres in diameter and uh, I think looks absolutely fantastic. There we go, we're more or less finished here. So it will go either way up. I'm trying to show you here that there's a plastic ring inside. It's flexible and it can be removed. It's, it depends upon what type of um, fitting you have on your 
uh, lamp as you can see it, it comes out and it pops back in so some fittings whoops uh, some fittings are bigger than others this is an adjuster which allows you to fit it on um, universally onto different types of uh, lamp fittings so it just slots in quite easily as you can see there we go and that's the finished result i hope you've enjoyed it and i wasn't too boring um, i'm not very good on voiceovers but as you can see that's just a demo my photography on that isn't very good but as you can see it's a really pretty shade when it's lit Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. See you soon.